The Cube at IBM Impact 2014 is brought to you by headline sponsor IBM. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Paul Gillen. Hey, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Las Vegas for IBM Impact. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm really excited to have here inside theCUBE, uh, the CEO and uh, president of Ustream, Brad Hunstable, uh, and founder of Ustream uh, on theCUBE. Hey, we're on the front page of Ustream.tv today. <laughs> Thanks a lot, hey, right. Welcome to theCUBE. Thanks for having me. Um, Thank you for enabling us to uh, stream live out across the web. You guys, I mean, I remember when you guys started, fantastic startup. It was, it was like, whoa, social media, Wild West. I'm sure the costs <laughs> are stacking up. You've learned a lot. You guys are now fully kicking ass, stable platform. You guys are growing like crazy. Um, you we're here. Tell us about your relationship with IBM. What do you got? You're, you're here for business reasons, not just for a social call with theCUBE. You're here for some legitimate business. So tell us what's going on. Well, um, you know, a lot of Ustream's growth in the early days, as, as you're well aware, ha came from early adopters. And the early adopters back then were mostly content creators and media companies. And over the last couple of years, we've, we've uh, increasingly served the needs of the uh, So we, we build video capabilities and technologies to serve the needs of everyone from you know, Salesforce to customers, or Cisco to customer, into it. Um, for things, you know, from product launches, press conferences, and doing webinars to training internally to, to CEO town halls. A lot of people don't know this shit. And so um, what we're here with IBM is they're, we're, we're part of their new launch called the IBM Market. It's one of the launch parts. Mm -hmm. In fact, we're the only video site, video platform that is part of that launch. Um, and we're, we're really excited at the opportunity to work closer with um, one of the most, if not the most iconic enterprise brand in the world, which is, which is IBM. And, and then the trend also with the marketplace is also bring some ecosystem support for IBM's overall portfolio. But if you think about it, um, you know, people want packaged solutions, right? So people want to have, um, they don't want to, they, they, they want to pure play video, maybe they do that, but also we want the big data, they want the analytics, they want the reporting. And it's also hard, you know, for, for a customer to go out and say, hey, what if I want to bring in, do video, I want to do a town hall or sales trainings, I want to do all this stuff. Wait a minute, where's the analytics? Where's the investment? Where's the closed loop? I mean, we've heard this before, yeah, right? Yeah. How much is the platform? Where's the ROI? Yeah. Well, I mean, if you close one deal, I guess, that, but you see where I'm going with this, yeah. is that there's a bigger system. So, um, what's your take on that? When you approached IBM, was it like they came to you? Did you go to them? How, just take us through the, the interaction. Um, you know, I, I think we've, um, we've been in talks with them for quite a while, so I don't, I don't even remember exactly who approached who, but, but you, you are right, when you're, when you're dealing with enterprises, they do want full solutions. They want to be able to have those solutions supported. And the beauty of the cloud is that um, you, can, you can, no matter what size your organization is, you can, you can quickly and easily test and try before you buy, get access to powerful capabilities, and build on top of them um, to meet the needs of whatever your specific organization is. So every, every business is different. Every business has different needs. But the robustness of the cloud and the robustness of properties like ours, like Ustream and what we're doing with IBM, allows those companies to, to build these, these experiences and video solutions in a way that you know, meets the needs that they have. Last time we talked at IBM Pulse, we, you and I were chatting in the hallway around Ustream's um, technologies. Share a little bit of the folks out there that might not know Ustream. I mean, it, it, the complexity around running a global scale video operation. Sure. And, what, well, and what are you guys doing that's different now that's going to give you some headroom for the future? Okay. Well, you know, Ustream today is the largest live video platform in the world. And we've, uh, we came from very modest beginnings. Actually, just I wanted to watch my brother's band on the internet because I was in the military deployed and I couldn't see his concert. Um, so we, we had a very simple you know, way we started the company to now serving the needs and, and, and serving very complex video needs for very large corporate part, you know, customers. Um, and you know, it's all built on top, and this makes us unique, um, you know, certainly different than most of the video properties out there, is we've built our own technology. 
And so we've built what's called the Ustream CDN. This is, we've scaled this globally. We have data centers around the world, pops around the world. In most markets, we're a tier one peering provider, just to give you a sense of how much bandwidth we push, with what the same peering status that something like a Netflix would have. And so um, we, we've, we built this out all, all on top of our own technology called the Ustream Media Server. And what the Ustream Media Server allows us to do is to scale very rapidly, reliably, um, leverage multiple CDNs around the world, multiple partners, and do all of that in a very cost-effective manner. And it's, it's, a, it's a big part of our IP and our, our flexibility and our, our value proposition to customers. What are your big opportunities that you're looking at over the next, uh, as the next chapter of Ustream? You guys have been very successful iterating your business, growing your business. Foundation said you guys are scaling up. What is the next chapter going to look like? What are your, what are your ambitions? Well, I think the, um, if you look at where the growth is happening in video, most people don't realize this, most, most of the growth, the growth of this next wave is going to happen within the enterprise. Take a company like Nestle. You've heard of Nestle. Big yeah, consumer yeah. good, packaged good manufacturer. They actually produce more hours of content a year than all of Hollywood combined. And that's not my stat, that's from Frost and Sullivan. When you look at last year for live video alone, within the enterprise, they broadcasted over one billion hours of, or viewed, one, one billion hours of content was viewed in the enterprise live. That's, that's, that's almost what we've done in the history of the founding Is that of our internal company. or external? Is it's, it content it, marketing? It's both, it's both. External and internal. External if it's to the customer, internal if it's to the employee, the most, perhaps the other important customer. And so, um, the enterprise is, is a tremendous opportunity. And what you're going to see coming from Ustream, we're going to continue to provide really robust solutions that solve the needs of these organizations for productivity, for transparency, to connect with consumers and their employees in deeper ways, and you know, have those all be very, very much API driven, leveraging the data of these companies and, and deep integrations that, that are simple and feel like a consumer product. Because you know, we, we come from a consumer background, we want to bring that same sort of you know, knowledge to the enterprise. Well, one of the trends in social media that we're really high on, SiliconANGLE, we, we watch closer to theCUBE is this direct business model. And you know, <laughs> when you know, even my first, my previous startup that failed, PodTech, we were all kind of like the democratization. And we all kind of failed, all those podcasters and the video bloggers just never happened, right? Yeah, like, yeah. Um, but then, you know, that was just, you know, first generation, now Twitter, everything else. The business model of advertisers is to go direct. I mean, you see, you mentioned Nestle. I know Pepsi, Coke, these guys are, yeah. they have dollars, right? So the old model was, put dollars in, into a vehicle that you didn't know which half was working for you. Now you say, I can instrument with big data and put 100% of my dollars to work with crowdsourcing, with content marketing. Completely different mindset. We're seeing uptake. What are you seeing on the status of that trend? Growing still? Is it, was it, is it changing directions? Is it still viable? Is it exploding? What's your take on it? I think it's exploding. I mean, the realities of it are, you know, every corporation today is a media company. Whether, whether they want to, be considered that or not, they are. I mean, what it, look, Red Bull creates as much content as most Hollywood, more, more, more content online than Disney. Um, companies like Grow, GoPro are creating more and more content. You know, and even companies that, like, like you wouldn't think were creating content are, like Cisco and Intuit. So they're creating content in a variety of different manners, and, and that's allowed them to connect with their users. And that, so most corporations today really know how to con con create compelling content, um, where that wasn't the case five years ago. And then we, we've built products like our live ad products that can help those companies that, that are good at creating content but not so good at driving the viewership, we can help them get millions of simultaneous viewers live. In fact, we do that for, for a variety of corporations around the world. So, have you thought about the whole disruption side of the business? In other words, did we look at kind of like what cable did for uh, TV, cable disrupted TV. Um, is it even possible for that to happen again with social or is it going to be more of so many channels that there's not going to be that kind of revolution, or is it going to be just different? I mean, because you guys probably looked at multiple revenue models. You know, do you become a broadcaster? Do you become the cable? Yeah. Are you the enterprise? Uh, what's your take on that? Because video is so pervasive, you could pick any horse to ride to the, into the sunset. What, 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 what's your uh, take on that, and which horse did you guys pick? Well, I think it's, uh, it's, it's definitely, it's, it's a different, it's definitely different. Um, the, the model of cable on the internet is, is going to change, is fundamentally different. I mean, look at what's happened even the last couple of years with Netflix and Amazon. Um, and, that, and to a certain extent, that ship has already sold for video, and that's not really where our opportunity is. We think our opportunity happens to be um, leveraging similar technologies, but in a lot of ways more powerful, in, in using that for this other type of content creator, this up, other type of media company, which is 
a major corporation or even a small business. And so um, it is a it so is enterprise grade basically. Yeah, absolutely inter enterprise grade, but 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 offering it in a way that that you can try before you buy and, and, and serves the needs of the entire scope and size of enterprise. I mean, just because you're a small business doesn't mean you shouldn't get access to certain capabilities. And that's the, be that's the beauty of the democratization piece. Just like for YouTube content creators, the same yeah. thing's happening now for small businesses all the way up to companies like IBM. You don't know what's going to go viral. And I think one of the things, when you, if you bring video into your operation, one thing I've learned is when you bring video into the operation, you get to do some things with it and sometimes some things will fall flat, some things will go home run. You don't really know. Um, but having that built into the workflow is pretty critical. So with that, what are some of the things that you guys are doing that are going to make it enterprise grade and what do you expect from the IBM relationship? Well, um, you know, enterprises want a couple things. One, one, first and foremost, they typically want a security. So they want to make sure that, particularly if it's a private broadcast or something, they don't want the word to get out. They, they want a reassurance that, that your product is not going to be um, able to be compromised in a way that would you know, jeopardize their, their business or very, very sensitive information. And so we, we've really doubled down our ability to, to, to provide a secure capability. They also want scale. And so, as an example, when we did the Sony PlayStation 4 launch announcement, this is a press conference, a product launch, live on Ustream, if they had tried that through some of the existing traditional capabilities, it would have crashed. We had over 1.5 million simultaneous concurrence at its peak. Um, during that two hour block, it was about 2% of the internet's traffic. And so, enterprises need scale they need, and they need reliability. And so, um, you know, a lot of what we're doing is, is to continue to, to, to invest there, and then, and then they, want, they want solutions that actually solve how about their needs. How about competition? Obviously, you have live stream, you have uh, Justin TV, uh, which they've kind of gone into the whole gaming thing with the Twitch thing. Um, it's almost like everyone's kind of selling into their swim lanes. I mean, what's your take on, does that come up at all, the competition, for you guys? It, it comes up sometimes for us. I mean, we have a, we have a, a, you know, a very large brand, um, at least by most measures today, we're the, we're the largest, and we've, we've leveraged that brand we built on the consumer side to help us close very large enterprise deals in the hundreds of thousands, or in some cases, even the millions. And so, um, you know, the, the you know, the, and there's other players that are in the space that are, like you have the traditional OVPs, um, you even have companies that we're starting to replace, like Cisco WebEx, yeah. which is used a lot. A lot of people are now turning to Ustream for those services. The biggest issue with people with, with video, because we live it every day, is, the cost to build out is just significantly, I mean, it's just too massive. Yeah. I mean, to someone to say, hey, I want to do some li uh, live broadcasting or build that into a, a workflow discipline, whether it's for content marketing, to having, you know, broadcasting, you know, a big concert uh, somewhere or doing, it's expensive, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, if you want to just do one-offs, I mean, what are some of the cost numbers? I mean, I mean how, what's the order of magnitude from, you, from your data? Is it like, because you, you have a leverage model. I mean, it, to me, it's very simple. Your leverage, for the customer is great because you already got the cost in so you can pass on that leverage to the customer, they could pay it as a service. Yeah. And that's a beautiful thing. Now, the, the alternative is what? Data centers, direct metering. Um, yeah. By the way, it might not be running properly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. can you give us an order of magnitude? Is it like 100x more problematic and more costly or? You well, I mean, I think the, the, the realities of it are as you, scale your infrastructure on, the, on a global basis like we've done, inherently your unit economics start to benefit you. But in the early days of Ustream, we, we had to pay other people to do this, and it was very, very expensive. Um, in fact, so, so expensive, um, we, we, we almost didn't get Ustream off the ground because it was so expensive. But there's been a lot of environmental factors where, where the cost of these things are continuing to come down, and because of the scale that we operate at, you can be a small business and get access to a global infrastructure, perfectly serve all your content in Korea um, or in, in, in you know, South America, leveraging our infrastructure that we built. Yeah. I mean, and to do that on your own, I mean, you're talking potentially millions of dollars. And so it's, it, it's, a, it's a very daunting proposition for, for most businesses that, are, that have yet to scale all the way up to our, our size. What's next for you, Stream? What are you going to do now? I mean, I've been following you on Facebook. You got a lot of you just in the White House. Um, yeah. Yeah. That was, <laughs> was that fun? That was neat. Yeah, it was. It was uh, Tell it us was a little awesome. bit about that. Um, you know, the, 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 can you it share was, it? Can yeah, you, yeah, okay, I can share it. it. I, I had the opportunity to go meet the the White House Business Council, which is something President Obama I think did that was really smart. He formed a a group of um, you know cabinet and secretaries that work under him to represent the needs of business um, and have relationships with business. And I was part of a small group that got to go and talk about some of the issues today and visit the White House and have lunch there. And 
Um, you know, it was, it was amazing. You know, the you certainly uh, could. Although you couldn't see it, I could feel the power of, the, I think, the U.S. government. <laughs> well, that, while I was in there, I was, I, was, I was intimidated. The security was, 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 was very tight, and that was an interesting process to go through, having never gone through it. And, you know, um, the, the, the good news is that, you know, whatever side of the aisle you are, and the reality of it are, um, I was very impressed with the people we met, and, and, and I get the sense, you know, they, they generally want to solve problems. And, I mean, they um, want government 2.0 is about opening up things, and I think that's something that's interesting to them. Yeah, we got to talk about the whole healthcare.gov <laughs> issue, and so I got to meet the CIO. <laughs> and the it's telling you have a live stream of how to do it every time, so, you know, how to, how to use Obamacare website. Um, I don't want to even go there, it's a whole nother. That. <laughs> that's my most dynamic thread on my Facebook page. Um, so, to end the segment, I'll give you the last word. Where do people find out more about uh, some of the things you're doing on the enterprise side? Is there a um, corporate website? I see Ustream.tv is the consumer side, or is that the main site? Yeah, today, today it's still all, all on Ustream.tv. In the future, that may change. But the, um, so if you just go to Ustream.tv, you'll see um, we have a very simple platform. You can try before you buy. You can put your credit card in, and within a matter of minutes, you know, be, be broadcasting live to the world leveraging video technology, even doing linear broadcast like a television, right at your fingertips. And then if you're a business that needs more of the, the robust capabilities that we may have specifically targeting enterprises, you know, we can talk to one of our sales reps and we, we'd well, love to be able to work with we're you. We're a proud customer. Thanks for uh, hooking us up. We appreciate the uh, Cube love on Ustream.tv. And, and again, if it wasn't for the Ustream, we wouldn't be in business. So you know, you're enabling guys like us to uh, bring some data out there and share that signal from the noise, so I appreciate it. Brad, great to have you on theCUBE. Sure. Be right back here live, streaming live on Ustream.tv. This is theCUBE at IBM Impact, and uh, we're on Ustream all the time, so um, keep on following theCUBE. Thanks to these guys, so we'll be right back.